Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzuda7 here again and welcome to another RuneScape 3 vlog here today. In this video I'm going to be talking about this week's update and patch notes. We have another ninja strike this week, number 11 here, and it is for the Lunar Spellbook as we knew coming into this week. So I'm going to be going over some of the new Lunar Spells and showing them off as well as check, taking a look at the ones that were updated to see uh, you know, did they really make them much better or not? Um, I'll be honest, just before we even get into it, I would rather have had, I, I believe, after having seen all these QOL changes, I rather would have had them fix the issues with Spellbook Swap uh, than have these. But hopefully they'll do that before too long. They have said that they're aware of it at the very least, which doesn't really mean too much. But anyways, let's go ahead and check out the first of the new spells, the first one being Sift Soil. And I haven't actually looked at where it is in here let me see sift soil there it is kind of a nice little icon to be honest and this thing costs 10 water runes and five earth runes per cast so if you're going to be using this at all you definitely want a mud staff but um i don't have one at the moment for the purposes of this demonstration um and actually i should probably get out actual water and earth runes since all i have for my rune pouches is mud runes Hopefully it doesn't use my mud runes now that I have these. I'm not sure how it actually will work. It's uh, something I've never checked, but let's see. Basically, you can cast this and it will sift your soil uh, from archaeology. And it does it faster than, I think, anything you, you can do. It does it faster than even if you have the master outfit. Or no, I think if you, do, if you don't have the master outfit equipped, it does it at a certain speed. And then if you do have it equipped, it does it at an even faster speed than at the um, the sifter. So let's see, I'll do a couple of them here. Um, so yeah, I don't really know how fast that is. I think that seems similar to the speed it was if you had the master outfit and you were at the sifter. And now if I equip all the whole outfit, you'll see it does one every tick basically. So this is faster and if you did have the mud staff, it would just take um, one astral rune per cast, but that's still a bit of an expense to make. I mean, I, I think it's perfectly fast the way it is at the sifter, but you know, it is up to up to you if you'd want to use that or not. Um, it's def like I said before; these spells are definitely in line with other lunar spells and that they take things that you can do through skilling or other methods and turn them into a spell and whether that's actually worth doing is a you know a different story but that is the sift soil spell and um, it also requires 91 magic so pretty high level requirement on that and um, this next one which i don't think i'm going to show off because it's pretty self-explanatory is trap telekinesis this one's right here, actually requires level 97 magic, which is pretty high, and uh, takes five air runes, two astral, and one law rune, so kind of expensive, considering it's not really that useful in my opinion. Basically, you can use it on hunter traps, or I think it's just box traps, uh, as far as I can tell, but you can use it on your box traps that have either caught something or have... Uh, been triggered and not caught anything or I think also ones that have fallen down and um, You can do that to basically not have to run over to them. I just don't understand Why that really would make a difference for someone like because you can just either for ones that have fallen down or that have been triggered but not caught anything you just have to click on them once and your character will run over and reset them and then for ones that have caught something you can just click it once and then you know have a key bind for your box trap to place it back down um, I just don't see this really being that much of a convenience not enough to warrant using a, a two astrals and a law rune for every box trap you want to use it on I don't know um, it's definitely an interesting idea but it just doesn't seem to be that big of an impact given how many runes it costs. But that's just my opinion. But that's Trap Telekinesis. Um, next up is one that they showed off on the stream in particular is the Fire Urns spell. And this one's pretty obvious what it does. I don't think I need to show this one off either. Basically, it is the it takes the non-fired urns and fires them like you do at an oven it's pretty simple uh turns them into the the ones that require runes added to them to make them into the full urns 
And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It does it one at a time through your inventory. And this one's also pretty expensive. Requires 82 magic. This is probably it right here, yeah. Requires 82 magic and five water, five earth, and 10 fire runes, as well as an astral rune. Now, one thing I wanted to look up, and I apologize for this small amount of typing here, um, because I remembered that this existed when I was watching the videos for these spells, the elemental battle staff would be very good to have for this one because it has three different types of elemental runes and the elemental battle staff gives you all rune types um, you know all elemental runes air water earth and fire and that's from master clues i think so that might actually be something you or that's something you definitely want to have if you're doing this but um, as far as I know, it's not actually faster than the oven. That's, I actually forgot that that would be something to consider. And I do that so often, it's actually ridiculous. I teleport to the PVM hub when I'm already there and I'm trying to go to the max guild. So I actually will give this one a test. Oh my god, those are actually selling for 4750k each. Um, let me think. Let's see, urn. Can I buy the, the urns when they're not... No, you can't actually buy unfired urns. So let me see if I have any soft clay. Doing some live research here, you guys. And my attuned, yeah, we can go to Ithil and uh, do this just to test it out. I, I forgot about the fact that it could be faster. And if it is faster than the oven, then I mean, there's at least some reason to maybe want to use it. But if not, then I don't, I don't, I don't really see the problem because I mean, it's not like. Not like the bank is that far away from here. Uh, which ones? I guess I'll make farming urns because I might actually use those. So yeah, you can mold them like normal. And then this one, by the way, I think I mentioned though, but it takes it requires 82 magic. So it's the lowest requirement new one so far. So let's see, how long will this take to do over here? So that will take 36 seconds. I think this also has the make X interface. Yeah, and this doing it this way, Oh, it's much faster. Oh, wow, that is way, way faster. I don't even see how long that was. That was under 10 seconds, though. So it's over three times faster than using the um, than using the oven. So actually, that's pretty big. That might be something you actually want to use uh, if you're making urns, because that is actually a very, very big difference. And um, yeah, I mean, you don't need a ton of urns all at once. Uh, like, I'm, I'm thinking on Iron Man. You will definitely be able to just, you know, I think you get 200 Astral Runes a day from from the Mage Guild in Yanil. And, or no, maybe you only get the 100 a day from Baba Yaga. But still, I think that should be plenty to, to keep up with urns unless you're doing a, a ridiculous amount of skilling. I don't know. That was a surprise to me. That's actually way, way faster. I'm glad I checked that. So that one's actually pretty good. Um, I would definitely recommend you use that if you are going to be doing urns because that will save you a ton of time. Uh, you know, over the long haul. Just make sure, ideally, you get an elemental battle staff, and if not, then either a steam or a lava, so that you save those fire runes, uh, because those are definitely the most expensive part of it. Uh, and the last new spell is telekinetic grind, which is 85 required, so a little higher than the um, fire urns. But this one requires two astral runes and one law rune and this one's basically just going to be great for grinding uh, mud runes that i can think of but also would probably be good for crushing bird's nests i would think um, i can't remember if there's anything else that you really would use it on i don't think so i, don't, I can't really remember grinding up much else on maybe blue dragon scales um, but I, I don't I don't think I've ever really collected those on my Iron Man. Um, but the great thing about it is you can use it and it'll grind 60 at once. So as you can see, just right there, boom, instantly ground 60 mud runes, just like that. So very very useful, especially for Iron Man who can't just because I think they made the uh, the ground mud runes tradable, didn't they? So you can just buy those straight up. But um, yeah, that's no longer really going to be a money-making method probably because it's just 60 at a time, boom, instant. Um, and I mean, just for one cast, so it's only two Astral and one Law to do all 60 at once. So this one definitely pretty nice. And uh, I would definitely recommend using that for, at the very least, Mudrunes and um, uh, Bird's Nests. 
So yeah, that one's pretty sweet. Um, pretty big fan of that one. So that one and the uh, the urn firing one are probably the two best, I would say. The sift soil is decent, but kind of expensive for doing one soil at a time. And then the trap telekinesis, I don't think I would ever use at all uh, personally, but maybe some people will enjoy that. So some interesting new lunar spells, uh, definitely. And now I'm going to jump into, oh, well, I guess there's one other new thing as well. And that's that you can make the lunar spells or the lunar teleport spells into tele tabs now. So I know each one of these has like a group version and a non-group version. I think the tele tabs are all just the non-group version. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same as the other tele tabs in the game. It's just lunar spells now. So that's nice, I guess. Um, I haven't really used tele tabs in a really long time personally, but I'm sure some people still use them. And this will be nice for people who don't want to move over to lunars forever when they're doing farm runs. I know farm runs are probably the most common use of these. Let me just see if I can look them up. So you can see here they are. They lo look a little different, of course, to the other spellbook teleport tablets, which makes sense. They've got a little moon on them, I guess you'd say, for lunar, and they can take you to all the various places that the lunar spells can. So, yeah, pretty pretty cool, I guess. Not that significant in my opinion, but it's nice that they now have tele tabs for, I guess, every teleport spell because it makes sense that those would exist. Um, so yeah, now we can move on to the QOL changes they made to previous spells. And the one that they kind of headlined with, which is a spell I've never actually used personally, is Remote Farm. So this costs two Earth, two Astral, and three Nature. I'm going to cast it here. I think this is from, uh, wow. I think this is from Livid Farm. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, none of the new spells require Livid Farm, which is good. But, um... Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I've never used this. Maybe I can sneak up on the wiki. Sorry again for the typing. Maybe I can see the old interface on the wiki. Maybe they haven't updated it yet. Yeah, they have not. Okay, so previously it looked pretty bad. <laughs> it definitely didn't look that great before. It was just a list of them with... Yeah, that, it's like a table almost, and there's no divide, divisions between the rows. It looks pretty bad. So this is a massive improvement, I would say. Absolutely huge. Um, I really I really like this a lot. And it looks like, I don't know if you could have done it before or not, but there's these buttons here. These weren't there before. So you can fertilize stuff from far away. Let's see what happens if I click that. Yeah, I just fertilize it with uh, the Fertile Soil spell or whatever it is. Um, and that's that's fertilized now. And I guess if you have, obviously, diseased stuff, it, you can cure it. And, um, yeah, that's pretty sweet. I think it's definitely a nice nice change for sure. And you can make sure you, like, you know, on maybe on Iron Man. Oh, it's dead. Tragic. But, like, if you're on Iron Man and you do a lot of herb farming, or even if you do it on main, you can check up on your herbs and see if they're diseased and cure them from afar. Definitely beneficial. Um, so, yeah, that is pretty sick. I definitely am a fan of this. I, I wasn't that looking excited about it when I was reading it, but looking at the old version and comparing it to this new version, it is a massive change. Maybe I'll try to put a picture up of the old version on the screen. Um, let me save this picture because it is a absolutely huge change. So, yeah, well, jo job well done there. And um going to be nice to be able to, you know, heal stuff or uh, rather cure stuff and fertilize stuff from far away. Well, I, see, I don't really know why you would fertilize Maybe only if you forgot to do it while you were on your farm run and you somehow remembered, um, then you could do that. I'm not sure. But uh, still, the cure thing is good enough on its own. Uh, pretty big fan of that. Uh, let's see. Other than that, the Make Leather spell will now do your whole inventory at once, which I guess is going to be nice. Does it use multiple c casts of it? I'm not sure. Previously, it used Make X. Uh, so let's see body runes let's see body runes i have 14,900 body runes i'm going to cast make leather and it does does it all immediately and it only does one usage of the runes so that's going to be a big difference to how much this spell costs to use because as far as i can tell before this update yeah you had to cast it multiple times i think maybe it did like five at a time now that i'm just thinking I, I think i remember it doing five at a time let me see if I can check on here. Yeah, 
uh, make leather. Here it is. Um, yes, it used to do five hides at a time, but now it does as many as you can carry. So a pretty big change to the amount that it costs to use. And I kind of want to get rid of this blue dehyde leather, so I'll just chuck it in there. But yeah, glad to see that. Wow, that insta sold. Very suspicious. Uh, so that's probably going to be a decent way to make some money. I'm not sure. I mean, I know that tanning hides was always a classic way to do it in like Alcarid, but maybe it's still decent if you do it with that method because it is so cheap to do the full inventory. And you can also, of course, use a fire staff at the very least to save those two fire runes. Uh, so that one's nice. This next one really confused me. Um, Tune Bane Idor is basically you can cast it while you're mining the rocks and then you'll just directly mine the bainite ore of the type that you have cast i i don't really understand why you would want to do that like you could just do it the normal way that you've already been doing it and it's probably less annoying because you have to recast this every two minutes as well i just don't understand the appeal for this one i'm going to try and go check it out at the lunar or the uh, the glacier cave here, but basically they say you can cast the spell on bainite rocks to mine the monster specific or directly from the rock. It just seems like a strange idea. I don't know. Um, obviously, you can still use things like signs of the porter and juju potions to buff your uh, mining and bank your ores, but it still works the old way. So. I would just recommend doing it that way because this just seems weird. Uh, but let's see, we have Tune Bane Idor. Uh, apparently it affects all rocks in the area for two minutes, so I'm just gonna cast it here. Or how do you even, oh, you just cast it on the rock? Yeah, and you have to have the, the item, obviously. And now basically you'll just have the runes taken from you every time you mine an ore, is what they said, so. This will take a little bit. I'll do the rock opportunity to get it quicker. And here we go. Bam. So I got two ores and it took the runes from me. That's a question actually. Does it take two if you get two? Uh, I'm not sure. But 1528 astrals and tuned Bainador costs two astrals each. So that is that. I just don't, I don't understand why you would want to do this uh, personally because I also think you can't store this in your ore box which would obviously be a big uh, downside to it because you wouldn't be, I mean you wouldn't be able to store it in your ore box so that's the downside isn't it um, so yeah I only got one that time but yeah that's basically it um, oh not, at least they do have a buff bar icon for that uh, I'm surprised to see that to be honest usually that's something they would probably add in later after people asked for it but um, that makes it a little bit less annoying to use, but let me just double check if you can or cannot use this in your ore box. I'm almost positive you can't. And obviously you can use, um, obviously you can use Bane ore in your ore box regularly because it's a regular ore. Uh, let me search. I'm almost positive though. Yeah, you can't even put this in your ore box. So it would just make it more annoying while you're mining because you'd have to bank more often unless you're using signs of the porter. Uh, so... Very strange one, in my opinion, not that useful at all, but um, I don't even want this stuff, but yeah, that um, that's one of the other updates. Then we have Super Glass Make, which is basically the same as far as I can tell. They removed a movement slash action delay that occurred after casting it, which should make things a bit easier. And it also now works on sandstone and crystal sandstone. And that's about it. Uh, it's it's not really that changed all that much. But one thing that they that was highlighted as a result of this is they said that you can actually get extra glass from using it. So let me see. They said they updated the tooltip. Um, oh damn, cost ten air and six fire. That's kind of expensive. Um, yep. Without the use of a furnace, creating molten glass has the chance to create an additional piece. Oh, so it doesn't even work to create additional robust glass. So. There's not really any reason to use this. Uh, this would probably only be useful for people who have, for whatever reason, not converted their robust glass while they mined it, uh, and they just have a crap load of it sitting in their bank, and they don't feel like running back and forth to the machine. I guess you could use this. Um, I'm not sure if it would be a uh, an entire inventory at a time or how it works. Let me see. Do I have any? I don't. 
I can go quickly mine some while I talk about one of the other updates. Uh, or I guess that's the last lunar spell change. So yeah, like I said, not all that much. Obviously remote farm change was actually really big. But other than that, the other ones, personally in my opinion at least, not all that big of a difference. Make leather obviously just makes it a bit cheaper to use and more convenient to do your whole inventory. Tune Bainite or change doesn't make much sense to me. Maybe someone will enlighten me in the comments with the OP meta strat that you can use with it, but I can't think of it. And then super glass make, we're gonna see here. It doesn't say on the tooltip really how much of it, it will do. So we'll mine five, or no, we'll mine six because it, make leather used to do five. So let's cast it and it just made it all instantly. Oh, it even just kept me mining as well. That's kind of funny. Uh, so I assume it works for your whole inventory as far as I can tell. So that's a pretty nice little thing, I guess, but it didn't really make a whole big difference to the, the or a big, whole big change to the spell itself. Just made it work on these glass spells. And I guess there was probably some big delay if they felt the need to mention that that was fixed because I was just, I kept mining even. Uh, so let's use it again here. And yeah, it does it all. So I'm sure it does your whole inventory all at once. Um, so that one's pretty nice. Um, although again, definitely want a steam staff. Is it steam for air and fire? I don't even know, to be honest with you. No, that would be water and fire. I don't even know if there is an air and fire. So I don't know, you guys can enlighten me in the comments on that as well. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the Ninja Strike. That's uh, the Lunar Spell changes. I was, again, I, I think I would have preferred to have seen the uh, Spellbook Swap lag removed rather than those QOL changes. But the Remote Farm is definitely a, a very nice one. So that one, I guess, is worth it. Um, just hopefully we do see that fixed uh, before too long. Um, and then other than that, there's actually also a new yak track that started today. I'm not going to talk about this too much, but, um, there's basically a new yak track. It's the same as all the other ones, you know, 42 days for this one. And, um, yeah, it has the 50 tasks and all the cosmetics, pretty much everything you've come to be used to for the yak track. I just don't think they had mentioned this was starting at all. As far as I remember, I mean, I didn't see anything regarding it. So kind of was a surprise to see. Uh, the theme of this one is centered around Karapak and the Dragonkin and all that. And there's actually some tasks that will be related to lore and the Elder God storyline. So there may be some new info coming out from that. And even if you don't do it during the Yak Track, this, these lore bits will still be available after the Yak Track closes, which it does end on November 2nd. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, it's basically got Dragonkin themed rewards in there. Uh, they show a couple on the um, update page. I mean, I don't really have any thoughts on it, to be honest with you. It is it is what it is. It's another Yak Track. I mean, I, I, I don't mind doing them. They're, they're kind of enjoyable to do. Uh, at least I do, I've do. i done them a decent bit on my Iron Man. Um, but yeah, it's not like it's anything to get all that excited about. So yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, bit of a longer video, but I did want to go over the Lunar Spell changes in as much depth as I could, and uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you like these new Lunar Spells? Are you going to be using them for anything yourself? And um, yeah, if you missed it, I did do a live stream on Saturday on my Hardcore. I'll leave the link to that in a pinned comment. If you do want to check out the VOD, it's currently unlisted on my channel, but that's the plan at the moment going forward. I'm going to try and do a live stream at the very least every Saturday. Uh, I will definitely try and do some during the week on random weeknights if I do have time. I've just been a bit busy recently as I've been trying to uh, buy a house and move out of my apartment, which has obviously taken up quite a bit of my time and attention. So once we do move, which is hopefully going to happen in October at some point, I should be back to fully making videos and uh, I'm also going to be getting back onto the hardcore videos quite soon. I just need to finish working on the little side goal that I've been working on for a bit, which I'll tell you guys about once I finish it and uh, then we'll get back to those as well. Thank you guys for watching. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.